Hi, this is Dr. Daniel Ronell on uh, Talk 1260 KTRC, talking with one of the alternative practitioners on my team, Dr. Marcy Newman, who's our acupuncturist. And part of plastic surgery, I think, is dealing with the whole person, not just the mere physical change of the outside. But I see having uh, a patient come in the door as uh, a chance for me to act on more than just one aspect of their life. So we talk about nutrition, we talk about stress reduction, we talk about things like smoking cessation if, um, if the patient needs it. And what Dr. Marcy does, and, and any acupuncturist can do, is really prepare a patient for surgery. So tell us, tell us about that. Okay. So first, know that as the patient is about to go through surgery, there's a lot of emotional changes and, and things that the person's going to go through. So you want to balance their energy to the point that they're relaxed, they don't have any anxiety about the surgery that's coming up, any fear or stress or anger that's been built up. You can release all that and make the energy in the body nice, smooth, flowing, and actually prepare it for a surgical procedure, and it will actually help with the healing afterwards. It does, and um, you know, we're talking about Eastern practices, but in fact, a double-blind placebo-controlled trials done by the NIH have proven that acupuncture preoperatively decreases nausea and vomiting and stress postoperatively and improves wound healing. So acupuncture actually of all of the modalities that we use is the one that is more in line with Western medicine, you know, hardcore Ivy League stuff. Um, but you do so much more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, what else can you do? What else can we do? And what else do I do? Um, first of all, as the patient's getting ready for plastic surgery, it's helpful to work with the chi or the energy of the face. So you can do facial rejuvenation, and you're working constitutionally with the person. So you're working where their internal weaknesses are, and you're firming uh, the face and actually increasing collagen. So people don't need a facelift? That's possible with some people. Okay, time to go. <laughs> now, I think stuff like that, facial rejuvenation, is a perfect adjunct to, um, you know, surgery or fillers if they need it because it's just one more step. Definitely. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. And there's many other things we could do. With Eastern medicine, you want to see where the blockages are in the body that might prevent them from healing well. Mm -hmm. And also, you want to see what things emotionally they have uh, tendencies towards. So if someone has a lot of anger issues, there may be certain lines in certain areas that are showing up more constitutionally and just uh, out of life anger and things that have uh, come on to them. But there's many, many other things you could do from asthma to uh, digestive discomfort to menopausal issues, uh, which I know is very big because you have a big uh, female uh, population in your practice, so right, right. and a lot of them are in menopausal and postmenopausal age. Right. So you can decrease that heat that's going on in the body. And you're a doctor of Oriental medicine. Okay. Um, are there acupuncturists out there who are not DOMs? Excellent question. Yes, there are. In in New Mexico, we're called doctor of Oriental medicine. There are three other states: um, Nevada, Florida, and Rhode Island, where we are either called physician or doctor. The rest of the country are licensed acupuncturists, LACs. I believe it's New Jersey we're registered. I don't like that term, but okay. <laughs> um, so yes, the majority of the country is LAC. Does that mean that in New Mexico, an acupuncturist uh, has more training? Um, it's not actually a matter of the training. We have master's degrees, even mm -hmm. though it's a state conferred title. A DOM is a doctor of oriental medicine, so. I would have the same training as someone graduating in and living in California, Arizona, Seattle, Texas. It's a three to four year program round the clock in, in the summer also. I see. So it's pretty intensive and extensive training. Very much. Um, excellent. What would you say would be something you could offer as an acupuncturist for somebody after surgery, maybe months after surgery? Wonderful question. Um, first of all, after you do surgery and there's blood pooling in different areas, for instance, I saw someone recently I'm thinking of, 
that had quite a lot of bruising around her eyes, on the forehead, on the side of her mouth. And so where it's pooling, there's stagnation of blood. So when there's stagnation of blood, there's stagnation of energy. So if I can move the blood and the energy mm -hmm. in that localized area and also distal areas, it's actually going to decrease swelling, mm -hmm. decrease bruising, and pain post-operatively. Yeah, no, my patients love that, actually. They, right. they have a very quick recovery time. Um, now, surgery is just one way of changing. What's something that follows later, months later? What, what, how, how does acupuncture fall into that? Oh, definitely. Months later, first of all, surgery disrupts um, the yin-yang balance in the body. So, and that's really what we're balancing when we're balancing people's pulses and their energy in their body. So a scar in the body actually can change the temperature on either side of the scar. So for instance, someone with back surgery, I've seen below the scar where it's ice cold, and the, above the scar is warm, hot, or nice circulating blood and energy. So the energy flow in the meridians is blocked by the scar. So you can actually work the scar, so to speak. We call it surround the dragon. So you can uh, surround the scar with needles and actually increase and open up the scar tissue. Excellent. So that's one thing. Excellent. Mm -hmm. This is Dr. Daniel Rennell talking to the acupuncturist on our team. Thank you so much for coming. We're on Talk 1260 KTRC.